Hey, happy Friday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. I'm going to give you the latest updates on what's going on with this cold air as we transition and stay in our fall weather. Plus, what's coming later down the road by the tropics. I do have new information, new data to talk about, not only about the tropics, about this cold air that's coming in, plus the one that's coming in November. So I'm going to let you know all the latest updates. You've never been here before. Make sure you subscribe. I am all year along. Now, let's get into your information. You can see over here in the Northeast, they do have still... All them storms I showed y'all yesterday, and this is going on all day long today. So hopefully y'all did pay attention to that video because they're having a lot of problems, especially over here towards New York. Now this is going all evening long before this starts weakening up, guys. So you have this high pressure and this low pressure right by each other, and you have all this moisture just funneling in and the high pressure just pushing in. You can see it with the onshore winds that is pushing it all the way towards the west. So that's keeping these storms right on y'all all day long so it will dissipate sooner or later but until then you got a lot of flooding going on but let me tell you about these temperatures because we got some new information to talk about with those as well now i will be fast with this i just want to make this a quick update let you know what all the latest information is that's just come out guys you can see on your ao your arctic oscillation we do have this cooler air coming down from the fourth through the eighth or the ninth also, when you look at your update on your NAO, your North Atlantic Oscillation, you see we do have this little negative pattern that's sticking in also for the 4th through the 7th on that cooler air that's coming in. This will cause a high pressure that's moving across the U.S. to be right over the northern Atlantic right around this time that we have cool air coming in. It'll cause the cool air to come into the U.S. Now, this is a weaker negative pattern than what we're seeing this morning. All this has relaxed some to where it's not going to go so deep into the U.S. Now you can see we're still in this pattern, guys, where you have this big deep trough on the West Coast bringing in cooler temperatures. You still have that big high pressure just rolling all the storms all the way around it, just bringing the rainfall only to the outer side. Remember, high pressure brings clear weather. But this is going to change soon. You can see it's still at the end of the run with the Ural, and it's all this cooler air comes shoveling in right around that time. So you see as we leave this pattern from the cooler air on the west side of the U.S., the warmer air on the east side of the U.S., and this cooler air comes in, you can see right around the 5th. It starts bringing in really on the 4th. It starts bringing in those 40-degree temperatures, some 50-degree temperatures. But as this moves further through, you see it don't go too far to the south. We have the 5th. That's as far as it comes in. It comes in all the way to the southwest bring some nice cool temperatures guys but as you go even further you'll see it don't really stick that long it goes all the way to the north side the south side is in the high 50s to 60s and as you keep going through maybe a little bit further it don't really squeeze too far with the euro it did take it further to the south but the update shows that this is going to be a northern tier issue and the southern side is still going to be about your average temperatures for this fall season you can also see this on a GFS as that cooler air comes on down, all the way down to the south. But the cold air, the very cold air, stays in the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley, and the Northeast through that transition before we go right back into that pattern again where you have another high pressure circling around over here and it's going to be cooler on the west coast this is your one transition and then again in november now gfs does take it a little bit colder right when you when you go on the fifth gfs takes it a little bit colder we start to get some of them 30s coming in with those 40s so we got to keep that in mind still it is trending with the canadian some colder temperatures definitely for the higher elevations and the mountains as you go through the six still bringing in those 40s but it's still 50s down here and below and 60s it's not bringing those 40s all the way to the south but still with the humidity and everything how it is in the south 50s will be cool enough and then as you keep going you see it stays warm on the seventh it does not go to where it's really deep it's just it's really a 50s that's shooting through, and then it's going right back on y'all warm up as the 50s keep shooting through the southern side, maybe, and all the freezing temperatures goes all across the northern tier. Still bringing some 40s, maybe even some 30s, definitely with your wind chills, guys. But then you're going to go right back into that pattern where the warm up is going to come right back as you go through the middle of October. You'll get another chance at the end of October to begin in November. But you can also see on your North Atlantic Oscillation that you do have that big negative dip from the 5th through the 8th. So this is bringing that cooler air in. And we also have another big dip coming in the beginning of November, a longer dip. 
But unfortunately, you can see the update with the Arctic Oscillation that the cool air we have now is not even going to be that cold when we get that next pattern, guys. So we have another dip coming in the beginning of November. It's going to be your average temperatures. It's not going to be no super cold air. Matter of fact, the cold air we have now is our average temperatures. And you can see this with the latest update from National Weather Service. Next 6 to 10 day temperature probability is a lot of above average temperatures as we go through this transition. And all these cooler temperatures that's coming in pretty much is going to be your average temperatures with a little bit of below average. Then when you go from 8 to 14 days as this transitions over, you can see that according to National Weather Service, these will be our average temperatures as we go through this transition, guys. So it will bring some maybe some 40s, but it will bring 50s and 60s across the south. Not the freezing conditions coming that will stay on the northern side of the U.S. So this is what you're going to see after the next five days as we come into the fourth. You're going to start waking up with cooler temperatures still on the west side of the U.S. while we go through this transition. And you're still going to have a nice warm temperatures on the east side of the U.S. But as you go through the day, your highs will still build all the way up into the 80s. You can see this here. We're still going to stay in this pattern all the way until the fourth. Now, once we leave the 4th and start making a transition from the 5th through the 8th, now you go have cooler temperatures moving on through for the 5th, for the 6th, for the 7th. Maybe some wind chills coming in on the 7th, maybe bringing some 20s to the higher elevations of the mountains and the upper Midwest while you stay still warmer in the south. Then you'll have your 8th, still some cooler temperatures. This is going to be your coldest day. Maybe some 40s hanging around. Mostly 50s in the south. It's not going to bring the 30s and 40s all the way to the south, guys. And with your wind chills, it's not even going to get that much worse. That's the 8th. That's going to be the coldest day. But at the same time, going through this transition all the way to the 12th, our 8 to 14 day precipitation outlook. Below average and all this brown because you have all this cooler air that's coming in. You do have some rain that's going to be above average for the northeast, a little bit for southern Texas. But as you go for the next 6 to 10 days, you're still cooler air on the west coast. You still have that below average precipitation. But this is going to start bringing storms towards the south central. A little bit towards the upper midwest. A little bit towards the east coast. But this is going to bring rainfall, beneficial rainfall towards the south. And you can see with the Euro that once you go from the 6 and go through this transition, it really brings a lot of good rainfall towards the south. Also towards the upper midwest. But they are in an exceptional drought down in the south. Now, 10 day outlooks always change, but just to get an idea, you can see a Euro starting to see a little bit of good heaviness that could come by towards central Texas. I mean, GFS is all southern and eastern, so it's all over the place on where this rainfall is going to land. All we can go by is what National Weather Service has and Weather Prediction Center shows that once we go from five to seven days away, this will update. So far, it's showing one to two inches coming across Texas. But just the next 72 hours, everything in all this greenish to blue is all half an inch to an inch, even for the upper Midwest, starting to get towards the inch in that yellow. But you're getting some for southern Texas. You are getting some rainfall. But over here for Florida, going into the northeast as well, y'all are really stacking up. Florida, yours is going to be Saturday, Sunday, and portions of Monday. But look at all this rainfall that's adding up for the New England states. A lot of heaviness, guys. Four inches of rainfall coming just until Monday. Matter of fact, this is all coming just within the next 24 hours. Heavy rainfall, three and four inches. And for the southeast for Florida, as you go Monday and Tuesday, then it starts adding up for one to two plus inches for rainfall for y'all as well. We also can see the next 10 days with the Euro chances for our snowfall. You see it has gone down greatly because of this temperature change, guys. So at the higher elevations of Colorado, Wyoming, even some of Nevada and Utah, a little bit of higher elevations of California, a little bit of Idaho, a little bit of Montana, slightly, there is some snow that is coming in the next 10 days. You can see the update with GFS as well. Very light amount. It has gone down considerably. You can even see the fantasy snowfall that was coming possibly for the north central, the upper Midwest, has disappeared also with GFS. Maybe an inch. And this is too far away this is 14 days away plus our update on the tropics you can see what our potential velocity anomaly and we still have all this steady lift all this favorable environment passing through all the way through the middle of october but all this is a little far to the west guys and this is all going into the eastern pacific plus we have what's building over there in the atlantic 
And you can see this on your cyclone location. So all the way to October 10th, all these are going to be going out into the Atlantic, and all these are also going to go into the Eastern Pacific. Now, after that, then we have an anomaly coming through sometime to the middle of October where things are going to change, and it's going to start getting pulled back towards the east-northeast. And you can see the latest update with the Euro that it's agreeing that all that favorable environment all up to the 10th of October is a little further to the west. But look right here as we go towards the middle of October, as everything starts transitioning back towards the east, northeast, like we get a Bermuda high pull and everything around. It gets a very strong anomaly coming in. This is a new information. All these are updates, guys. Look how strong that is. That's almost as strong as we have, if not the strongest chance for lift favorable environment a lot of vortice a lot of favorable thunderstorms to grow so we get them tropical waves that comes off the coast of africa every three to four days one of those is going to tap into that so we need to watch out for the 15th of october it did show the 20th but now it's moved up towards the 15th also around the first week of november okay it's still too far to be sure but you can see right around that time after you leave the 10th it starts becoming favorable for having systems start moving around from the west towards the east northeast in the ensembles and you can see this on multiple runs of the ensembles that is where it's moving to as we go towards the 15th past the 10th the euro can't see that far now you can also see in the model run i got this from h triple r so you can see what's going on in the Next 48 hours with these storms. Remember, all this is central time up here. But you see these storms are going just like I showed you yesterday, going all day, all afternoon long, and start pushing offshore from New York and Long Island around 9-ish tonight. So just be aware of that, guys. These are going to last still all evening long, these storms from y'all. A lot of heavy banding at times. But it is going to start dissipating once it hits 9 and 10 o'clock. It is going to hang around some of Connecticut still as you go all the way towards midnight. But it is going to start loosening up. But that is going to be the last place that sees the storm. So it is going to go for the rest of the evening. Psalm 43. Judge me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. O deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man. For thou art the God of my strength. Why doest thou cast me off? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? O oh, send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me unto the holy hill and to thy tabernacles. Then will I go unto the altar of God, unto God my exceeding joy. Yes, upon the harp will I praise thee, O God my God. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, who is the health of my countenance and my God. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you so much for your time. And remember, all glory always goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I pray he always blesses you and your family every single day of your life, you and your neighbors. <laughs> Forever. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I'll see you all Sunday.